Hey folks, so today I had a number of things that I'd like to chat with you about. So rather than just do a small video for each of these various different topics, I thought I might just put them together in one long rambly video. Now before I begin, uh, this will also be available as an MP3 over on uh, my Patreon page. Don't worry, it's not behind a paywall, you can just download it as an MP3. But um, interesting, interestingly enough, Patreon is, is quite a neat place to just keep MP3 content. Um, so yeah, a lot of my videos where I do a lot of talking but there's not too much to show on the screen, I tend to put in MP3 format and uh, put them over on the Patreon just so that you guys have um, the option to listen to it as an audio-only podcasty kind of thing. Um, because why not? Why not indeed? So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my time on Twitch. Um, I don't know if everyone here knows, but I spent the entirety of January basically focusing on Twitch. I streamed every single day for the whole of that month, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, that platform and, and what I think about it. But I wanted to do that uh, so that I could focus on it and, and give it a good shot before really sort of giving my, my thoughts on it. And then I'm going to be reading some of your feedback. Now, I get quite a few emails uh, from time to time uh, from you guys. Uh, I do have a public email address address. It's contact-chris at postio.net. Uh, however, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, sort of feedback from the from you folks on the channel, uh, there, um, there are, I get a lot of emails that are like 500 to 1000 words that are absolutely incredibly thoughtful. And, uh, and I just don't have the time to respond to them all. So, um, uh, so what I'm going to do is, 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 is there's a bit of a new policy on this channel that uh, if you're going to um, give feedback through email, uh, please don't expect an email response, but that it might show up in, um, you know, in, in like a feedback section of, of, of this channel here. Uh, I don't worry, I'm not going to be um, uh, disclosing any personal information that you guys might have included. I'm just going to be talking about the general sense of the emails for this particular um, uh, this particular uh, episode. Um, with one notable exception, but you, but that will make sense when, when we get there. Um, but yeah, so so from now on, if you guys want to give me a bit of feedback from the show, uh, either do it with the thoughts that it might go into like a feedback um, a video, or just in the fact that, that I probably won't respond on the basis that I just get quite a lot of very thoughtful comments. And to be honest, if I get sent like a, a thousand word um, thoughtful uh, email, it just does, it just feels rude if I respond back with a single sentence reply. Um, and I don't really know how to uh, how to work with that. So um, so that's what I, I think I'm going to do is is that I'm going to take a selection of emails and then possibly use them as um, you know as, as as something of a uh, a platform to discuss the uh, the topic topic sub I was going to say topic matter subject matter on this show. I, I quite like doing these uh, rambly videos, and I know that you guys like them, and they do offer up the best comments. So feel free to comment as you go. Um, I will assume that when you comment on a particular part of the um the 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 episode here um that that you will be you know that it that it's a, an immediate response i'm not going to expect everyone to to uh watch or listen to the whole of the video before commenting that would be a bit unreasonable since this video will probably be longer than you know most most other videos on on youtube um if you want to be particularly helpful uh you can also put in a time code uh so that um uh so that you um so that I know specifically what you're talking about. And also, this video will also be available on my Peertube channel, which uh, you can find on share, share.tube. Uh, that's the URL. It's not my entire channel, that's just the, the platform I'm, I'm on, but you'll be able to find my videos quite straightforward. Also, as another bit of rambly self-promotion, you can also uh, offer me any feedback on Mastodon. I'm chrisware at linuxrocks.online. There'll be a link either in the description or on this very channel page or whatever. I'm not particularly difficult to find. Um, Mastodon is probably the best place if you want like immediate feedback from me there and then or immediate reply. Um, it's quite a good sort of to and fro forum in, in that regard. So if you want to get in touch with me in a more casual way, then, then that's something that's probably the best best avenue to to get with me at um i know that not not all of you guys are of course on mastodon uh, or in in the fediverse because of, of course there are numerous other platforms within the fediverse um but uh, I, I between the email and between the mastodon that's really uh, all i can offer up at the moment uh, i'm not really on twitter i've got like a private account for personal you know correspondence friends family that kind of thing so i'm not really um you know 
uh, sort of taking on fr- friend re- requests on Twitter. You know, like my Twitter is a very secondary sort of off to the side. Don't bother with kind of thing too much. It's just for keeping in touch with one or two people who I've um, who, who are not in the Fediverse and um, and that kind of thing. So it's more of a private medium for me in that regard. Incidentally, I think the best way to use Twitter, actually, um, I know that, that, that I had a lot of discussions about Twitter on this channel. I know that other Linux YouTubers talk about uh, the concept of Twitter quite a lot. Um, and I do generally sort of agree that, that Twitter is not really a place, well, it's not a place that I particularly want to be involved with, um, uh, but I do sort of understand that having like one foot in the camp there uh, does kind of, you know, like there there is reason to, to, to have some kind of uh, insight into Twitter. That's why I've got a closed and private account. That way that I'm never really part of the wider Twitter environment, but I do get to communicate with individual friends uh, on there. And I think that that's, that is definitely the, to me, uh, uh, the, it's the only way to, to truly engage with Twitter in a healthy way. Because the thing is now with Twitter is that it's become, in many ways, and I think uh, Brian Lunduk made a, made a great point, that Twitter in a lot of ways has become a platform for bullying people. And the trouble is, it, and I, you know, I fully agree with that statement in, in a lot of cases. We see a lot of shame culture on, on Twitter, whereas what you really want is... is um, is is a lot more dialogue. You want construction there because when you start getting into very, you know, when when you start getting into shaming people, you're not you're not making you know you're not educating people. You're not bringing you know you're not opening up a dialogue. You're not um, in any way um, improving sort of the situation as far as uh, as I can tell. Uh, what what you're doing, you know, it just seems to be well, it just seems to be bullying in a lot of cases. I'm sure there are plenty of exceptions, but the thing is, is that is that you can't really have much of a shaming culture if you don't have like the audience to shame people in front of. And I think that's the danger is that you just don't, I don't want to be part of that audience. I don't want to be, you know, you're either a participant or a bystander and both of which are contributing to a very toxic environment that um, I'd, I'd rather not be involved in. So at least with the closed Twitter, you, you are kind of like in a, um, in, in a sort of a, a more removed environment from the, the large mob that seems to have, have amassed there as well. And I'm not making any um, indications to, as to any political leanings or any particular events or particular, you know, um, anything in, in, in you know, I'm not, I, this isn't a specific address to a specific event or, or, you know, political hemisphere or anything like that. It's just the general platform of it seems to... Um, seems to 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 foster this culture of um of of uh, of un- unhealthy social values i think um so there's that you know it's it's almost like pick a side or we'll assume that you're not on our side type of mentality it's you you're either with us or against us kind of mentality and um and, and you know maybe i'm uh you know maybe i'm i'm not smart enough to get the big picture or or maybe i just don't think that the world fits into you know, little uh, isolated camps as neatly as sometimes people would have us believe, I, I guess. Um, so I, I don't even want to be an audience to that particular sideshow um, in, in regards. So there is that. So I think I've covered a fair bit of meandering rambling, and, and this is actually a good um, a good opportunity to get to a first bit of, uh, of mail here. Uh, a quick comment on your last social media video. So I'll leave this person uh, anonymous. Um, But um, they say, uh, Hi Chris, Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick comment on your video, Is Social Media Broken by Design? I don't use a Google account anymore, so I can't comment on YouTube. I've said it before, uh, I love your rambly videos. Well, uh, hopefully you're watching this one, and hopefully you're enjoying it, whoever you are. (laughs) But, um, and I hope you don't mind me uh, reading your words on on this channel. I had to sort of make a bit of a call here, but hopefully uh, allowing you to be anonymous should uh, should be, should be enough here if you do take objection to it uh, feel free to, uh, to to let me know um, with, with the same email okay so like you I deleted Twitter and uh, like you I deleted Facebook and Twitter a while back because social media is addictive and a massive time waster hoovers up our personal data and is often a crappy way to communicate I decided to give Mastodon and Linux rocks online a go um, as I knew you were there. At first, it felt like a great place to be. Uh, it is, but I've recently deleted my Mastodon account too because I realized it still has too many of the features of social media I dislike. It still has addictive features like pull down, refresh, likes, 
and reposts despite trying to minimise these, and I don't like the way people interact a lot of the time, myself included, even on Mastodon. What surprised me is that it felt almost as good to delete Mastodon as it did Twitter and Facebook. Give me a good old-fashioned forum any day, though I guess that is also a form of social media. I, I would agree. I would agree with that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that even with the best of intentions, I'm not sure the negative features of social media, at least the Web 2.0 kind, can ever be mitigated to the extent it becomes a balanced, uh, balanced and positive thing for society. Anyway, keep up the video making. I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. OK, so. This one actually got me thinking a lot as well, as, as many of the emails uh, that I do get sent uh, gets me thinking. Um, and I do actually have to agree with, uh, agree with the broad uh, arc of this particular comment is that Mastodon does have a lot of the same problems that Twitter has. I even have to say that even myself at times I've posted stuff that, you know, me being in a bit of a gloomy mood and I've had a bit of a moan and then I sort of look back on it and go, Chris, you don't want to put that out there in the world and I've sort of taken it down again. So uh, I can definitely sort of empathise with, with the fact that uh, a lot of Mastodon um, is taken after a lot of Twitter and, and people often refer to um, Mastodon as a as a Twitter clone or as a Twitter killer or as a Twitter competitor. And I think that, that is a fair comparison to make. Um, so if the problem with Twitter, um, you know, is, is, is are, are the things that you had, you know, if, if the problems you had with Mastodon are the same as the problems you've had with Twitter, then that, you know, stands to reason that, that Mastodon is not going to be for you uh, either. Um, and in fact, Brian Lunduk made a great um, point in not, only, not his last video about social media, but I think it was the one before it, where it's like the more successful you become on social media, uh, the worse it gets. And, I, and, and that point that he made really stuck with me because I notice it um, a little bit now with, um, with Mastodon. Uh, I don't know how many followers I've got on Mastodon. I, I, I follow most people back. Um, so I've got 1,978, so nearly 2,000 followers on um on my Mastodon account here, uh, which is more than I've ever had on Twitter. So there's that. So I definitely feel that I, I'm certainly more at home in Mastodon. I feel more comfortable to, to talk with people. I feel that the people there are definitely more, um, um, I guess I have more in common with, I guess, maybe. Um, and it's not that I don't have things in common with people on Twitter, but Twitter seems to be an amalgamous mass of people, whereas you've got local instances on Mastodon and um, and lots of smaller groups that, that pop up uh, there within. So, uh, and, and a lot of those groups are also rather organically formed because w how the Fediverse sort of, emulg you know, how it builds itself is based on the connections that other people make. So if you make connections with other Linuxy people, for example, uh, and your friends are also Linuxy people, their friends are Linuxy people, then you do sort of have clusters of people um, uh, that are sort of almost organically formed, uh, which I think is, is, is quite nice. It's certainly a lot better than Twitter, where it just seems to put like the most popular comments at the top or it seems to put the most uh controversial comments at the top and 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 um and with reddit as well i think reddit might even be uh worse than this in in the sense that although you have smaller sort of more closed off communities um the the like system is a lot more powerful than it is on something like mastodon to like a a, a post on on mastodon is rather inconsequential like for me i don't care how many likes a post gets and i use the like system as a bookmarking tool so if i like a um, a post on mastodon it's almost certainly because i sort of want to come back to it later because um it has that kind of value but that doesn't necessarily correlate to if i really 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 like a post then i like it uh, the chances are i tend to reblog uh, repost um or reblog i guess um post that i i specifically specifically like or, or again I specifically want to uh, to signal boost but uh, as time goes by I do notice that when I post something there are like more I don't know um like uh I suppose less less earnest answers you know people being sort of you know smart asses about something or people being contrarian about something or people having the need to uh broadcast the fact that they don't like something and uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I no doubt have probably fallen into the same kind of trap. I'm not talking about uh, the characteristics of people here. I'm talking about the characteristics that social media brings out in all of us. And that's a very key distinction here is that I'm not talking about 
you know, how whether or not people are good people or bad people or whatever, they're like that's completely irrelevant from the situation because it's it's how social media sort of makes us act or it's the impulses that get drawn out from social media. And I think that's the important thing. And I know that uh, even Mastodon at times has drawn out uh, impulses from me that I'd rather that it didn't. So, um, you know, and, and I'd rather to sort of spread, you know, in my personal opinion, I'd rather like to use something like Mastodon to spread more positive messages and more useful, you know, like knowledge about signal boost, you know, useful tools, useful pieces of software and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I certainly know that I fall down on occasion on that as well. Um, but to me, Mastodon is, is, is the best out of, um, it's the best out of the bunch because, you know, as much as it might be a dumpster fire, it's our dumpster fire. And that's the important thing. Like Twitter is is Jack Dorsey's dumpster fire. Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg's dumpster fire. But Mastodon, the Fediverse, that's our dumpster fire. And I think that makes the key difference here is that, you know, it, you know, it is open source. It is federated. Um, and even if you have like other platforms like um, PixelFed, Plerima, PeerTube, it all builds in. Um, and I think that amongst the software available on it, uh, you get even getting, I think, is it Dysporia, uh, Diasporia and, and Friendica, you know, they're getting in, in, in on the Fediverse as well. So if you're not too fond of Mastodon, there might very well be other um, platforms within the Fediverse that are more suitable for you. Maybe even just PeerTube. I mean, PeerTube is in, in the Fediverse as well. And I think that it's quite wonderful. If I were to ever uh, remove myself from Mastodon, uh, you know, I'd still be on uh, on PeerTube. I'd still be on uh, ShareTube. And, um, and you know, that's, so that's not exactly me, you know, sort of completely um, disconnecting myself from the network. And I guess that's another thing about the Fediverse that I really quite like is that it's a network that al allows you to engage with it um, on your own terms. Now, maybe, you know, is there a market for a platform that actually gets rid of the likes, gets rid of the, re you know, re uh, the, the boosts and the reblogs and just has a, a more uh, chronological you know sort of slow paced feed with a lot less feedback and more thoughtfulness probably you know i think there could be a room for it um so maybe you know and, and the thing about the thing about the fediverse is that it's it's growing and it's growing in a very organic way it's not growing to make money it's not growing to uh to 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 become a dominant market share it's growing because it's it's growing how the users want it to grow uh, and and it is and i keep coming back to the word organic but i think that's the thing that i i fundamentally like about it and yes with all its problems, with all its flaws, um, it's still the pace, place that I, I would call home. Uh, now, another point uh, that's made here, give me a good old fashioned forum any day, although I guess that is also a form of social media. So yeah, I do sort of agree that forums are a social media because it's a medium that you're social on. Uh, so I guess I would even put IRC into that um, category. And IRC is, um, you know, that's older than the World Wide Web itself. So just, you know, that's, uh, and I think some people have even said email could be arguably a social media. And again, it's a medium that you're social on, especially if you bring in um, email lists and email discussions and that kind of thing. Um, and I also would uh, include things like Discord and Riot and the Matrix and all that kind of stuff in there as well. In fact, specifically thinking about the the things that like forums and discord rooms and even irc rooms have in common is that they're they're less open a community so i was talking about you know in twitter where i closed off my twitter so i didn't actually necessarily uh, fully delete it but i sort of deleted the public essence of it which is to me the most you know like that's perhaps the starkest thing to those um you know outside of my personal network but um there is uh there for, for every problem that there is in a mastodon style open social network uh there is a problem in the forums the chat rooms kind of social network as well i can't remember who it was but someone wrote a rather interesting article about how the uh the, you know discord and and um and forums and things like that um can actually um be quite bad in that they um, spread a lot of misinformation because of the, these the communities tend to be a very like-minded people um, confirmation bias tends to get accelerated here and especially with when you combine that with the group mentality of um, you know all these people you know all these people have a very similar mindset with the very same kind of biases um, confirmation bias is not only less likely to be challenged but less likely to even be assumed to be there because it's like well someone amongst our group would have pointed out some kind of problem it's like the bystander effect as well so you combine the bystander effect thinking that other people in your group would be able to be critical of shall we say some some you know bad quality information being posted um, but because everyone has the same biases and um, because everyone makes the same kind of assumptions uh, 
then yeah, bad information can can spread among forums, can spread among closed communities. And if you look at some of the most dangerous communities on the internet, I'm specifically thinking of things like the anti-vax community, uh, a very dangerous community, quite frankly. Um, a lot of their most powerful, um, you know, social, um, so, you know, social networks, I guess, come from things like, uh, cl you know, s smaller closed communities like forums. Same thing with the Flat Earth Society as well. Um, you know, a lot of that started in forums because it's a small closed away place that isn't challenged by opposing viewpoints. Um, and uh, that's a, a, a big problem because when you have a lot, you know, if you're if you're um, privy to some rather bad information on a platform like Mastodon, uh, you know, that's going to be challenged. That's going to be straight up challenged. There's no doubt about it. And that's, you know, a, that's a much better thing than letting bad information go unchallenged. So, uh, you know, it, it, it might be that there's a lot of smart asses over there on Mastodon, but at times you need a smart ass. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it's a simple conundrum in the least when it comes to what's the type of social network that works the best, because the the inward looking communities, I can see a lot of danger in as well as the as, as well as the flame wars that we see on more open platforms. So it's you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I'll be interested to hear thoughts down in the comment section below. But um, I think the thing that I do kind of want to get across um, more over anything uh, else is that, yeah, maybe the Instagrams of this world and the Twitters of this world make, might make us feel like shit. And that's not a good thing, especially for our mental health. But then the social media that makes us feel the best about ourselves and feel the best about our opinions is unlikely to be um, any better. That's just that's just my thoughts on the situation. Uh, next, next email. Greetings, sorry this is so long. Your videos are great and you have some good insights into Linux and the major distributions out there. I know that you've used Mint, Ubuntu and Manjaro, but you had some nice things to say about Fedora 29. I was wondering if I could get some advice, seeing as that you are a much more experienced Linux user than myself. Forums are fine, but I know you have some idea of what you're talking about and I value your opinion. One year using Linux, uh, I am using Fedora 29 on my backup laptop. Fedora has newer software, vanilla GNOME, and a solid system with the latest kernel and packages, but without the problems of a rolling release. However, I have hit one snag in my wonderful Fedora experience. Right now, I am a graduate student and like using Jabref to manage my references. It works well with TextMaker. But the version in the Fedora repositories will not install or work. There is no flat pack available. The version in the Snap Store will not run, and the app image has a listing but no file to download. I am able to run it from a jar file, but it lacks the convenience of that installed apps have. Now, I could install it from a tarball, but I have not done that yet. Is there another way to do this? I could always go back to Ubuntu, but I have to deal with PPAs, old packages, and that older GNOME version that lacks the option to have vanilla GNOME without the built-in dash to dock. Apologies for the long message, but I want you to have all the information about the situation. Okay, well, certainly, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I don't necessarily say I would say I'm a particularly... I suppose I'm an experienced Linux user, but I'm certainly uh, not an expert. Um, I would say, I mean, I'm more familiar with Linux than I am with just about any other operating system, but um, but on a technical level, um, I, I must, I'm still just, uh, just a user, I guess, for the most part. This is a conundrum that... Um, uh, or the or the sort of the what's in the uh, distribution repositories is always part of the conundrum of choosing your Linux distribution, um, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people do tout the Arch-based distributions as being particularly good in this department because of course you've got the AUR and the AUR does come with some, um, you know, it, it, it does come with some uh, complications, but it's certainly uh, a way to make software very easily avail available for a very large number of people, but. Um, but going back to Fedora, because I'm not going to be so crass as to suggest you change your distribution based on this little um, conundrum in and of itself. Um, what I would do in that situation and my situation, um, you know, this this is a bit of a clunky workaround, is that I would open a, a directory in my home directory um, and 
put all of my binaries that I download in there. And that's that's actually what I do. So I've got, for example, I've got Waterfox. So I've got the binary for Waterfox in there. I've got the app image for Caden Live in there. Um, and I've got a few other things that you just don't seem to get in the repositories or something where you'd rather have the direct version from the developer's website in there. There are sometimes, uh, there are times when you want to have the developer version in um, specifically, you know, the developer's binary specifically running on, on your operating system rather than the one that's being distributed through your distro's repositories. It's a um, uh, it's it's an exception to the rule, but sometimes uh, your uh, distribution might not necessarily update the package as often as you'd like, or sometimes uh, there is a fix that is in a newer version that um, that you would prefer to run. So there's you know a number of reasons why you might want to run a version direct from the developer uh, itself. But um, so I have a sort of to me I've just incorporated it into my overall system of having. Uh, files in this sort of secondary binary folder in my home folder. And then what I do is if I use the program any substantial amount of time, I will put a uh, shortcut to it in my applications menu. Now I use XFCE, which comes with its own um, menu editor so that it is quite trivial to then add in new entries into my menu. Um, I don't know how you would necessarily do it with GNOME. Uh, you might need the GNOME tweak tool or there might be another tool uh, that you would want to use. Um, and that, I guess, would be the way that I, I would accomplish that. Um, I um, I suppose another incredibly clunky way, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but it is an option at your disposal, is to have a virtual machine. So you would have something like GNOME Boxes, which is my virtual uh, machine of choice. Then you would install a distribution, maybe something Arch-based or Ubuntu, and then run uh, not only uh, Jabref, but then TextMaker together so that you would then have the integration that you require uh, between the two and and that would be sort of my workaround. That does of course require a reasonably uh, hefty machine and it's also certainly not as um, smooth as having it as part of the menus as having it as part of the a more integral part of the system. Um, however, uh, I am certainly not an expert in this field, and I would be interested to hear if maybe there are some people watching this video who have uh, comments that they would be able to to offer up that might be able to um, help with the situation or possibly more advice or or even just a sort of discussion of your own personal workflows there because um, because I think that would be the 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 best of uh, the best best advice that I can sort of offer and i'm so I'm sorry that it's as as lacking as it is um but it is, I mean, I've I got to say that one of the reasons I'm drawn to Manjaro is actually the, the package uh, availability. And uh, with Manjaro, even though they have, they take the Arch packages and they hold them back a while so that they get a little bit more testing and, and, and Manjaro does have a reputation of being a little bit more stable in its upgrade process than with vanilla Arch or, or distributions that take straight after vanilla Arch. Um, but also the Manjaro native repositories have a few packages in there that aren't in the Arch repositories that Arch users would be expected to go to the AUR for. And I don't like going to the AUR if it can be avoided. I would choose, I would go native repositories of Manjaro, Flatpak, um, and then snaps and then app images. And then I would maybe see if there's a binary that, would, that I could get straight off the developer website. And then failing all of those, I would then look to the AUR. Um, uh, and in fact, I think there is one case where I've where where I I use the AUR and not a, a developer's uh, package, and that was is with the Itchio uh, client, the Itchio Games client, um, which is really good and also open source. Um, but um, that is just because the Itchio client in the AUR is is quite a trusted uh, application there, and. Um, um, but that's the only one. Um, I tend to I tend to just sort of um, look for other options before going into the AUR, and I can usually uh, sort of find them. Just because the AUR is a little bit of the, um, it, it, I wouldn't install anything from the AUR without doing a, you know without going onto the uh, entry into the AUR uh, web you know the, the AUR website, looking it up in the AUR specifically, looking at the comments that are listed to make sure that it's up to date, maintained, and um, and, and uh, it's not carrying any kind of malicious content that uh, that shouldn't be there, um, and uh, and usually the sort of the, the comment process uh, and and the 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 whole AUR process is 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 uh, about as safe as you could expect from a medium of that type. It's not perfect, but um, 
uh, it is it's you know like I wouldn't ever recommend just installing something out of the AUR without at least um, doing a little bit of a personal background check on it first just to make sure that if it's maintained if nothing else there are a number of packages in the AUR that get put up there and then the maintainer decides that they don't want to use that package anymore and then decide they lose interest or um, or, or sort of forget about it and um, and, uh, and 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 thus it falls into um, unmaintenance. So there we go. That is uh, that's going to be the last of the emails I talk about today. Um, but if you would like an email that I would read out and have a chat with you about on a video or potentially a live stream, then uh, let me know down in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you most certainly have been awesome. Toodaloo.